Hello there, all you cool cats and kittens. Welcome to our final installment of Fun with Fulbright. Episode 6, The Selection Process. Today I'm going to talk you through the full uh, realm of the selection process of the Fulbright. I know that it's a long lead time both in applying for it and also in playing out whether or not you've been selected at the end of the day. Fulbright has a multi-tiered process that starts at the campus level, goes to the national level, and then has an international round as well. But today, we're going to demystify the selection process for you and answer any questions that you might have to get you started in the process. So you've been hard at work on your application all summer long, and then you turn in a draft of it August 24th for our campus deadline. By that date, we need to have a complete draft of the whole application, including all your supporting documentation. So that means your letters of recommendation and your language evaluations, transcripts, etc. All of that is due by August 24th. What happens next is the campus committee evaluation process. We take that application you've turned in for the campus deadline, and we, we give a, a copy of that to two to three members of uh, your campus evaluation panel. These are going to be UR faculty or sometimes some community members who have some type of expertise that they can bring to help you with your application. So they're going to be people who either have knowledge of or expertise in the country or region to which you've applied, or they might be faculty uh, who are experts in the subject matter of what you're applying to go study or research there. So these two to four people are going to have read your application, and then you're going to come in and talk with them sometime in mid-September. We can schedule these in person if you're on campus, that's what we prefer, or sometimes we also can do these via Zoom or phone if you're an alumni or if you're not going to be on campus in the fall. So you come in and talk to the campus committee. This usually is going to be somewhere between 30 and 60 minute meetings, and there is a twofold purpose. One, they are evaluating you as a candidate and your application, as there is an evaluation form that goes along with the application when it's sent to Fulbright for the national deadline. But the second purpose of it is to provide you feedback on the application to make your application better. So they might have specific things that they think the, um, that country might be particularly sensitive to that you mentioned in the application that you might want to take out. Or they might say that you buried a, a little nugget somewhere that they think that country would really love and they want you to play that up a little bit more. So they're going to give you some more specified information, usually about how the, the country of application might read this application. Um, and they're going to give you that feedback at the meeting. You're then going to have two to three weeks to implement that feedback before the final national deadline. So you have to turn in an application August 24th so that we have something for the campus committee. But between the 24th of August and the national deadline of October 13th, it's days of work in progress. And you can keep revising any of those application materials. October 13th, whatever your final uh, state your application is in, you're going to hit submit. It's going to go off to the national competition. And all the hard work you've put in for so many months is finally over, and you start the waiting game then. I should note that this is a campus committee evaluation process and not a selection process. We're not choosing specific students to send forward or not send forward for the national deadline. Everybody that applies will get sent forward, but you're going to get sent forward with that evaluation form that the committee has to complete uh, as Fulbright requests us to do. So October 13th, your final application goes in, and where does it go next? Next, it goes to the national screening committees. These takes place in November and December, and these are made up of U.S.-based faculty members who have country or region-specific knowledge. So in general, these are read by the type of grant and the country of application. So if you applied for an English teaching assistant grant to India, all of the applications for the India ETA are going to go to one national screening committee panel. They're going to read all of the applications for that type of grant in that country. So these three NSC panel members, as we call them, uh, U.S.-based faculty that are going to know something about India. Maybe they're from India originally. Maybe they study India, India. Maybe they've done the Peace Corps in India. They have some specialty knowledge of that country, and they're going to read all the applications for the India ETA. A separate committee is going to read the research study grant applications for that country. Um, Research and study are read together in a panel, but they do separate out the ETA from the, the research study grants for each country. So all of these India ETA applicants, we'll go with that example, are being read together by these panel of three faculty members. And then those three people are going to come together in uh, November or December uh, with an IIE facilitator, and they're going to rank the application. So let's say they got 75 applications for the India ETA. They're going to rank them from number one being the strongest applicant down to number 75 being the weakest applicant. 
then they're going to kind of make a cut of the cream of the crop to send on to the next round of the process. Usually they're going to send about two times as many applicants as there will be final spots. So we'll say if India is going to award 15 ETA grants, they're probably going to forward about 30 applications to the next round in the process. So they're going to take that top 30 out of those 75, they're going to forward them on to the next round, and they're going to, it's called recommending those students. So you're going to get a notification uh, in December or January if you've been recommended to the next round or not. We also call those students semi-finalists. So you'll find out then if you have been recommended and thus are a semi-finalist for the Fulbright. Again, between December and January, all students are going to find out if, hey, you've made it through to the next round in the process, which means you get to keep waiting, or if maybe they've decided that this is not your Fulbright year and you can go on with other plans. So let's say that you do move forward and they're recommended to the next round. So the second and final round of the process is done in the countries themselves. So this is sort of the international round of selection. And you're going to be read by country commissions or embassies in your individual application country. Um, some of these are done just by paper readings of the application. However, more and more countries are incorporating some type of a brief phone or Skype interview. So you might get a notification in January or February that they would like to have you schedule a phone or a Skype interview. Uh, usually these are very quick, about 10 to 15 minutes long. There are a few countries that might have them a little longer. Sometimes they're looking to, catch, to check your language skills. Sometimes they're just looking to ask you questions about what your philosophy is of teaching or ideas for the classroom or to see what your knowledge is of that country. If you do receive an interview uh, request, please let our office know and we can help you set up some mock interviews. We have banks of questions that students have been asked in the past for some of these countries and we can help you prepare for that. So you either will have a an inter brief interview or maybe some countries don't, um, and the country commissions make the individual decisions. So that's important to know because not only does your application need to resonate with American-based faculty in round one, at the end of the day, it is the individual countries that are deciding what Fulbrighters they want to have there. And so you do need to be culturally sensitive and appeal to the, the funding bodies in those countries because they make the final decisions. These funding bodies of who they are, uh, they vary from country to country. Some countries have what they call an in-country Fulbright commission. So that's an actual Fulbright office if it's a larger program, and those are the folks that might be making the decisions. In some of the smaller countries, it might be some groups from their equivalent of the State Department. It might be uh, in-country um, faculty from a flagship university or a ministry of education. It can vary from place to place. No matter where you go, these in-country commissions or in-country selection processes are going to take place. And then once they've decide, they're going to let you know on a rolling basis, as soon as they're done with the process, they're going to start letting students know if they're being offered the Fulbright grant or not. So the first countries will usually start to notify students at the very end of February, maybe beginning of March, that they've received the grant. Um, but that process can go on for quite a long time, being that some students may not know until the end of April if they're being offered the grant or not. Today is the 28th of April, I believe, and Malaysia only uh, notified yesterday for this year. So be prepared to find out your final selection uh, outcome anywhere between the beginning of March and the end of April. Um, by the time you graduate, you should know if you're moving forward or not. Thanks for watching our Fun with Fulbright series. I hope you find it helpful, even if you just saw one or two or maybe you watched all of them. If you have any questions, please contact the, the Office of Scholars and Fellowships at fellowships at richmond.edu. And again, if you want to get in the process, what do you do next? What do you do next, Izzy? Well, let me tell you. If you go to our website at fulbright.richmond.edu, you'll see the links where you can sign up for an advising appointment one-on-one. -on -one. You'll also see information on the workshops that we're going to be holding uh, this coming May, and also any webinars or info sessions that might pop up. You're going to also want to make sure that you register formally with our office so we know you're planning to apply, and that registration form is available on the site and is due by June 1st. Also, us.fulbrightonline.org is the Fulbright's official site where you're going to find all the information on country summaries uh, and anything else you need to know about selecting the right place to apply to and the right type of grant for you. So we hope to hear from you soon about an advising appointment. We hope to see you at some upcoming workshops, and we hope to see your registration form coming in there. Thank you again for participating with our Fun with Fulbright series, Episode 6 of Selection Process. We hope to see you soon. <laughs>